Hi guys, so today I'm making chicken bacon in a creamy sauce with spaghetti. So this is a um, chili recipe I learned in the Seychelles. Red chilies with olive oil, garlic, salt and fresh coconut liquidized, put into cubes, ice cube trays, frozen and then thrown into an ice cream container. So when I cook red meat, I use the red cube, very potent, so beware. And today I'm making the chicken, so I'm using a cube of the green paste. I'm boiling my macar <laughs> spaghetti. <laughs> um, why did I use such a small pot? I don't know, but I do like it al dente. A little bit of oil and salt, boil it to your satisfaction and some oil to cover the bottom of my favorite pan, so excuse the look. I've chopped some onions, and the spices I'm going to use, cracked black pepper, parsley, fine black pepper, salt, oregano, basil, oops, and garlic. My spaghetti has been boiled promise it took less than 12 minutes. I'm drizzling some olive oil. I kept some of the water. I'm going to use it to make my, start my creamy sauce with my chicken. And also, although this is a chicken and bacon recipe, you can always add mushrooms instead of bacon or macon, anything with a smoky flavor. So, I don't know why I'm saying so many so's, but we'll be back. My spaghetti is done. It actually took less than 12 minutes. I'm using some olive oil. I'm keeping the water to start my sauce for my chicken and bacon. Remember, you can always substitute bacon for macon or mushrooms seafood with this recipe it's a lovely recipe i'm slicing my chicken in angles slivers like that it's easier to cook and also it feels nicer in the creamy sauce we are going to make i've put my uh, stove on high and I have chopped the bacon. The chicken has been sliced. Remember, you can do it as you want, but I find this one feels, uh, feels best in the mouth. Let's put it that way. And now I'm going to season this. In the meanwhile, the onions are going to fry, and then the bacon goes in. The smoky flavor sort of comes out. I'm going to add some parsley. Ground pepper. Basil. Yeah, I'm not good with the amounts. Do it to taste. Teaspoon of garlic. Big teaspoon of garlic. Crushed garlic. And then I have to grind this pepper into the cap to add it in. So all the goodies are in the chicken. And the onions are fried. You don't need it brown like a curry. I'm going to add the bacon to that in a few minutes. So I've got it going on high. Maybe it's a bit too high. I'm bringing it down to four. Got it going for about three minutes now. I'm sure you all are cooks though. Mm -hmm. I'm just sharing these quick recipes. I'm actually watching a movie, so I want something fast. And actually, while I'm doing this, I'm also making, following a jalebi recipe from an awesome YouTube channel. So the syrup is made. And the mixture is proving. Um, so I will share that link 
if the jalebis come out good. So I think it's time. It's not good. It's not golden brown. I'm going to put the bacon in now. Bacon's in. Just gonna fry it a little. It doesn't have to be crisp. I'll put the ring down to four. And that feels like low. Okay. Let me have some patience. not supposed to have any color really because this is really like a white cheesy sauce we're going to do yeah okay so this is about two minutes on heat four I'm just gonna leave it for another minute or two and I'll get back about two minutes looks good to me remember the chicken has the garlic cracked black pepper parsley thyme sorry not thyme wow I don't cook with thyme in a hurry <laughs> parsley basil oregano ground pepper salt and remember now we're going to use this cube very potent please be aware when you make that mixture it's fantastic, especially people with, a, with an Indian tongue, gives it a kick. And it's freshly made, it's that combination of coconut, fresh coconut and green chili olive oil with garlic. It really is magical. In, in the Seychelles, they actually use it fresh on the table as an addition to the meal. So I don't have to wait until this dissolves. I'm going to throw in the chicken now. Chicken's in, giving it a stir. The garlic is all over the place. I'm going to turn this heat down to three and just let the chicken cook through. Because after this, all we have to do is add flour and make the sauce not separately in this pot that's why that's the way i cook i try not make too many dishes because i have to wash them so i'm going to leave this for i'm going to turn it down to three and leave it it's five to three now i'm going to look at it again at quarter past three actually this feels a bit too fast. I'm turning it down to two because the chicken is far from cooked and it needs that 15 minutes to cook. If you want, you may add a little bit of water. Now that I've said that, let me do that and see how it goes. So I'm using the water from the spaghetti, just a little bit to take that sizzle away and Let's see this in 15 minutes. It should be done. So 15 minutes have passed. And this kind of looks done to me. Remember, it's still going to cook in the sauce. You can test it. That's why it's actually much nicer to cut them in like slivers. Cooks quickly. So to this, I'm going to add two tablespoons of flour, ordinary cake flour. I'm going to pause this video while I sprinkle it. So it's two heap teaspoons of flour. And I'm just going to mix it. I'd like to actually put it up now from two to four. So you'll see it gets kind of 
sticky and clumpy, which is fine. Don't worry about lumps in this. You won't find any, I promise. <laughs> Also, be careful with the salt because to start this whole process, we are using the water from the spaghetti. Just pouring it in there. I'm going to let it get up to four and then bring it down again once it looks good good to me. So I haven't used all the spaghetti water. I must have used with a little at the beginning and now about a cup. Jeez, it's boiling hot here today. The doors are closed but yet you'll still find a fly come around. It's so okay. But they do belong in nature. There's a reason. So I put this up to four and you can see the water has done its job here. And now I'm going to get the milk. So this is cold milk. It's a cup. I'm just throwing it in. You can, you, we may have to add more, depending how much a sauce you want. And this is any milk, guys, whatever milk you prefer, just to give it that creamy flavor. Now, normally, I don't make this into a cheese sauce in the pan or pot. I would add my cheese once I dish this up on my spaghetti. I put the sauce over and then I sprinkle some cheese. I like serving it separately. I don't mix it all up, but... If there's another pasta you want to use, like macaroni or shells, maybe you want to do it differently, you can stick it, put some cheese over it, in it, and stick it into the oven to get a nice crusty look over. But I'm not doing that. If you look at this, you can see the flour is not cooked, right? But I think I need to add more milk. So I'm going to add another half a cup because I like it creamy. Actually, it's more like a three-quarter cup, but I'm putting it in. It will thicken with the two tablespoons of flour. So from four, I'm going to take this down to two. And once the flour is cooked, the sauce thickens slightly, it will be done. And you can taste your salt, etc. then. Oh, that's hot. Okay, so I'm bringing it down to two. And we're going to leave it to cook. For, I will tell you when it's over. This is ten minutes later. I'm going to check this. You can see it's like a little bit catchy at the bottom. And it's been on number two for the 10 minutes. This is the time I will taste it. You can taste whether it's too floury, whether it needs a little bit more cooking. Okay. Mm. Mm. It's a bit salty. I think I misjudged the salt, but it's very spicy. Actually, it'll be fine with the spaghetti. So go easy on that spaghetti water because that already has been salted. I think maybe I would have salted this twice. It's not too bad, actually. No, not too bad. I want to add 
some more liquid to this. So I'm going to add like a quarter cup of water. So it looks a bit milky because it is a milk glass. I'm going to add some more that quarter glass of water. Because I want more sauce because when I eat this, I'm going to add some cheese on the top. Also, if you're going to add cheese to the sauce, just be careful that you're not cooking on high and you slowly mix in the cheese because it could curdle. I would show you that now, but I don't want a cheese sauce, so... Yeah, I like this texture. I'm just going to leave it on this heat of number two for another 10 minutes and it should be done. It's about eight minutes later. I'm just checking because I want it to get too thick. For me this is just perfect. It's a creamy sauce. I'm going to switch it off and leave it on this heat now till I'm ready to serve. And if you have a prawn, you can decorate with a prawn, but I'm just going to put the spaghetti, this chicken and bacon sauce, and some paprika on cheese and paprika on top. I will show you once it's presented. I hope you enjoy this dish. Please share it if you think it's easy. It was actually quite quick. And the next I'm going to make fried green tomatoes like I promised. They're getting a little bit big on the tree. And unless you're growing green tomatoes, you're not going to get it anywhere else. So I'm going to garnish this dish with a prawn. And to devein a prawn, you use a paring knife or a serrated small knife. Cut it down the middle, right from head to tail, and you will see this is the vein that South Africans don't like. I've got it in the paper there. Okay, there you go. It's all gone. You can run it under some water. Leave the head on. I'm going to give it a quick fry. It's butterfly now. Okay. And we're going to give it a quick fry in a little bit of oil, no garnishing. I'm giving this prawn a quick fry. Just one lonely prawn because I just wanted to show you what you can garnish this with. However, if you wanted to make this chicken and bacon with chicken and prawn, it's also lovely. If you have chicken, prawn and mushroom, this base, the sauce can be increased and you can actually make a lasagna, which I will do on another day. I think I'll wait for winter. And um, yes, so a tip. When you devein these prawns, wait till the shell comes out, put them all into a piece of newspaper, fold them, put them in the freezer until the garbage is going out the next time. It just prevents flies and yeah, with this fishy smell that's going on. So I don't really feel like having a prawn, but I wanted to put this dish together and show you how it could look if you were having guests. And another tip is, when you actually have your spaghetti done, it sort of like clumps together. You can wait until it's cooled and just ruffle it a bit and it loosens it. It makes it easier to use the spaghetti scoop. The prawn's frying nicely there. I didn't put any seasoning because I think there's enough seasoning in the sauce. This is just for decoration anyway. It should be done. 
in a few minutes. A little bit of, can you see? Just oil to grease the pan. I've dished up my spaghetti and the sauce. I'm going to decorate with some cheese. Usually it'll all be very hot and you can, the cheese will melt. I'm going to put some paprika. If you have fresh parsley, that's also great. But the paprika adds to the smoky flavor. And after a few minutes, the prawn is done. To be quite honest, I wasn't feeling like a prawn, but I wanted to show you this. So, we're nearly done. I should put it on my famous uh, placemat. <laughs> Enjoy, guys. If you have fresh parsley, this would look brilliant. But this is how I would eat it. Have a good evening. Bye.